Welcome to creating a node base editor in Unity, lesson one. So in this lesson, we are going to get our development environment all set up. So we're going to create some folders and just make sure that we are running through and making sure that our scene is nice and organized and ready to go for our scripting or development uh, stage of our node base editor. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to go into the assets folder and I'm going to create um, a new root folder for my whole um, node base editor uh, module or Unity package, if you will. So I'm just going to call this the GT node editor. And really, this just makes it a lot easier uh, for you to share your code uh, for your particular editors by nesting it all underneath some root folder. Uh, it makes it really easy just to right click on this folder and export as package and then remove all dependencies. That way, like everything is underneath this particular folder. So. For this, we're going to create uh, a couple new folders. So I need an editor folder. So I'm going to say create folder editor. Now this is going to house all of our editor scripts. So our windows, pop-up windows, um, our utilities, uh, stuff like that. All right, so I'm going to create a scripts folder. All righty. So the scripts folder is going to contain any sort of scripts that we don't necessarily need to be included into the editor air, um, scripts itself. So these are things that will run when the game is run, basically. And then we need our uh, resources folder. So let's do that. So then underneath the resources folder, we're going to create a couple more folders here. I'm going to create a new folder and call this uh, GUI skins. All right. And we're going to create another folder under that. That's going to be our editor skins. And then we're going to create a folder called game skins just in case. All right. So then in the resources folder, I'm going to create another folder called textures and one more called fonts. So let's do that. It's going to house all of our fonts. And inside of textures, we want another folder called editor textures. I'll just editor for short. How about that? And game. There we go. So all the GUI uh, textures for the editor are going to go and live in this textures editor folder and then any sort of texture that we actually use in game We're going to put into this game folder over here. All right, so <clears throat> That takes care of that. So let's go back up to the editor folder over here, and I want to add a couple more Folders just to organize things out. So we're going to be creating uh, some scripts that manage menus We're going to be creating some folders that manage windows All right, we're also going to be um, creating some utility scripts for ourselves to, to just keep our code nice and clean. Um, and then we're also going to build up a nice um, view system utilizing um, inheritance uh, and just the basics of uh, object-oriented programming. That way it's much easier to update our actual editor views instead of having all of our code inside of one long uh, editor window script. Okay. All right. So then underneath scripts, we need to add a new folder called uh, data. We're going to create a new folder called data. All right, and this is going to house all the actual um, uh, scriptable objects that we use to serialize our data, uh, so the nodes themselves. All right. All right. And then underneath uh, data, we're going to put one more folder, and we're going to call that nodes. All right. So that is pretty good to go right there. And we're pretty much set up. We actually need one more folder here, and it's going to be called database. And this is where we're going to store all of our particular scriptable object assets. Now, these assets are going to contain graphs, and the graphs are going to contain nodes. All right, so throughout this course, uh, you'll get a better understanding of why we created all these folders. Uh, it's just good um, practice uh, to get into the uh, process of creating um, your folders in a nice organized way, and especially if you create more tools over time and editors and stuff like that, you'll start to develop a style in how you build up these particular uh, folder structures. So this is just um, one way that I've seen uh, that works pretty well uh, for most editor tools. All right, so with that, we have uh, finished up lesson one and are ready to start scripting our node-based editor. Thanks so much. <laughs>
So what we're going to do now, uh, now that we have our folder structure all set up, let's uh, just start stubbing in our script. So we're not going to stub in every single script that we might need, but uh, there are a few um, that we know we're going to need. All right, so for instance, we know we're going to need a menu, right? So we can launch our particular node-based editor. Uh, we're going to uh, store a whole bunch of utilities, so we can create a utility script. Um, we're going to create the views a little later on in the, this course, so we're going to skip that for now. And then we know that we're going to need uh, an editor window, which will be the whole editor window for the whole node-based editor, basically. And then we're also going to need a pop-up window, so we will create a smaller editor window script that manages just pop-ups for things like entering names and stuff like that. All right, so uh, let's get started then. So I'm going to go up to menus up here, and I'm going to create a new C sharp script, and I'm going to call this GT uh, node menus. All right, so that's good there. And then I'm going to come in my windows, and I'm going to create a new C sharp script called GT uh, node editor window. Oops, node editor window, like so. And then we're going to have our uh, pop-up window, so gt node pop-up window. All right, so those guys are good. And then we also need our utilities. So we're going to say gt uh, node utils. All right, so that's going to house all of our utility methods that we use, or, or functions, method or functions, whichever term you like. All right, and then basically uh, what we can do at this point is just stub in our actual graph uh, script and our enumeration script. I think that will be a good thing to do at this point. So I'm going to create a new C sharp script and say GT node graph. So this script is going to be responsible for processing everything that happens within a graph. And then we're going to have an enumeration script. So this enumeration script is just going to house all of the enumerations that we use. So this is a great way to give um, objects or, uh, inside of your uh, scripts some sort of type or some sort of ID or something like that. So we'll just call this node enum. All right, so with that, we are all ready to go uh, with our scripts. So the first thing that we want to do, really, just to kind of get things moving along, let's pop open our uh, menu script over here. And let's actually get our menu up and running. So what I'm going to do is just say using Unity Editor. All right. <clears throat> and really, I don't need to extend from any sort of class, and I don't need these start and update functions there. All I really need is a new menu item. So we're going to say menu item, and we're just going to put this in a menu item called node editor forward slash launch editor. So this will actually launch our editor window for us that will house our graph. Alrighty, so there we go. That's all we need. So then we need a function to go along with that. So we're going to declare a static void function, and we're going to call it init node editor, just like so. And for now, all we can do is just debug log just to make sure that it is, in fact, working. So we'll say launching a node editor. Yay. All right. So everything is good to go there. So we could actually declare this uh, static as well, since we're not, we don't really need any other sort of class. All right, so let's actually go back to Unity and let that compile. And you'll notice if everything went well, you'll have this new menu uh, option up here. Sometimes you have to just click once on this upper bar up here, and then it'll pop into in the view, basically. So if we actually select Launch Editor, bam, it says Launching Node Editor. So that is all working. So what we can do now is actually get our window up and running. Thanks so much. Welcome to creating a node-based editor in Unity 3D, lesson three. So what we're gonna do in this lesson is actually get a window launching. Uh, from our menu item that we created in lesson two. All right, and then we're going to go over some of the built-in uh, methods that are available to you uh, with these editor windows. Okay, so let's get it up and running. So what I need to do is go to my Windows folder here and uh, launch the 
GT note editor window script. So let's get this guy up and running. All right. So we don't need any of these starter functions there. And what I need to do is include the uh, using Unity Editor namespace. That way we have access to the editor window class itself. So we say editor window. There we go. And that basically gets us all set up. So our class is now set up so we can draw editor windows and we are part of the editor window class or extending it, if, if you will. All right, so uh, what I want to do is um, set up my regions here. So something I usually like to do. And it just helps keep all of your code nice and cozy and organized. So I'm going to do a variables region, and we're going to do a main methods uh, region. And you always have to close it out with an end region, or you will get errors. So then we'll do a utility methods and end region, like so. All right. So there we go. That's all nice and organized there now. So in our first variable in our variables region here, what we need, need to do is actually store an instance of this particular window that gets launched. So when we hit that menu item inside of Unity, we're going to store this particular editor window in a variable so we can access it later on. So I'm going to make it public so we can access it from outside. And it's got to be static. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to make it of type GT node editor window, yeah, just like that. And I usually like to call them cur window, but uh, you can call it whatever you'd like. All right, all right. So then down in our main methods down here, uh, what we need to do is actually build the method that will launch the, the visual form of this editor window. So I'm going to say public static void. We're not going to return anything. Init editor window, and that is just my own method name. You can call it whatever you want as well. All right. And it's got to be public so we can launch it from our menu over here. So if we make it public, that means we can access it from another script. All right. So then I'm going to say cur window. Whoops, cur window. Let's do that again. Is equal to editor window dot get window. And then we put in the type of that window. So GT node editor window. All right. And then we just need to make sure that we cast it to the right type as well. So we say GT node editor window, like so. All right, so then all we need to do, or one thing we can do, you don't have to do this, but we're going to give it a title by saying cur window title is equal to node editor. Perfect. All right, so that should get everything up and running. So the next thing that we need to do is go over to our menu script over here. And instead of doing this debug log here, what we're going to do is we're going to say GT node editor window dot and you'll notice that there is that init editor window function right there. So by doing that, it will call this function, create the window, give the window a title, and display the window for us. All right, so let's test that out inside of Unity over here. All right, so everything compiled nicely. Let's say node editor, launch node editor. And bam, right there. Now we have a node editor. It's got a title of node editor. And we have a window that's floating. And the windows inside of Unity can be docked anywhere you see fit. Or they can just be free floating as well, like so. All right, and they come with a close button, a maximize button. And we can also add tabs and stuff like that to it. So it's kind of a generic window that Unity provides us uh, so we can build our own custom editors. All right, perfect. So. The next thing that we want to do in this lesson is just cover some of those built-in methods uh, that we use. All right, so let's go down into our main methods region here. So a couple of methods that are called um, by default with these types of editor windows uh, is the void on enable. All right, so this gets called right when the window is launched. So you can do some sort of uh, testing or logic uh, right when the window launches. Uh, we can do void on destroy. So this gets called right before the window actually closes down. So you can do any sort of like cleanup to your code, remove objects, <coughs> excuse me, whatever you see fit. Then we have a void update. So the update actually updates um, at a different rate than the actual on GUI call. So that's the next one. So we can do some sort of just logic testing in here uh, on a per frame basis. It's not real time per frame. I think it runs at like 70 frames a second, something like that. 
And then there's the void on GUI. Now this is where you'll draw all of your editor GUI. And this is where we will tap into drawing the, the graph and the nodes and everything like that. But the on GUI actually runs twice for every update. So in its first pass, it's doing a layout. So it's trying to see if anything's changed to the GUI. And then the second pass, it is actually drawing the visual representations of the GUI and the data. All right. So let's actually do some debug logs here. Uh, and what we're going to do inside of our on GUI is we're actually just going to draw a label for now. So editor GUI layout.label field. All right. <clears throat> and we're just going to say this is our node editor. All right. Just to prove that this is where the GUI is being drawn. So then let's come up to our on enable and let's just do a debug log. So we'll say enabled window alrighty and then we'll come down here and we'll say debug.log uh, disabled window and then we will check our update so let's check this so we'll say updating window and keep all my casing Consistent there. Perfect. So let's actually go back and test out all of our methods there that we just created. All right, so I'm going to launch the window from our menu item. And bam, so we have our, this is our editor label. That's our on GUI. You'll see that we are updating our window, and it's actually got a tick, so it's updating. So we can do lots of things with that, like GUI animation if you wanted to. Um, you can always check your logic to see if any sort of flags have changed or anything like that. You also notice that we got an enabled windows, window uh, log. So that means that right when the window launched, it called what was ever inside on enable. So then if I were to close this window, you see we got a disabled window. So we enabled it, we're updating it, then we disabled. So it's really important to understand how these uh, four methods actually work for these editor windows because you can actually accomplish a lot with just these without having to create your own sort of uh, engine, if you will, or some sort of update loop. All right, so that is the way to get a window up and running inside of Unity 3D and understanding the built-in methods for it. All right, so let's take one more look here. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so that concludes uh, lesson three. Thank you so much. <laughs>
go into the view base and get this code all settled. Alrighty. So these aren't going to actually uh, extend or inherit from uh, mono behavior because they're not a game object. They're just purely for editor um, reasons. Okay, so we're going to just make our own classes here. All right, so we're not going to extend from anything, especially from this view base, because it is a base class. All right, so this base class is actually going to be working um, inside of the Unity editor. So we're going to be using the Unity editor namespace right here. And just for safe measure, let's just put in a, a flag here that tells it to only run in the Unity editor mode. All right, so by putting this uh, if and end if check there, basically. Um, when we go to compile all this uh, into an executable, none of the, the editor or none of the code within these two um, in this if statement here will be included in the actual built and compiled application. All right, so there we go. Now we're all good. So the next step here is to actually uh, get our regions in place. So I'm going to declare my public variable region like so, end region. And we'll do our main methods. <coughs> like so, and our utility method. So we'll say region utility method. So again, this is just kind of like what I like to do when I'm uh, starting out my scripts, uh, just to keep things organized in my code. Just really helps out when you have to come back to your code after uh, a few weeks and you've completely forgotten where you put things. Just helps organize everything out. So I'm gonna put in uh, one more uh, region and it's not gonna be a private it's gonna be protected so we're gonna do protected variables all right there we go so now we got that all settled so what we're going to do is we got to sit here and think about what is common between all views all right so all views are gonna have some sort of title so we can put that in there so we can make a public uh, string called view title all right um, all views are gonna to have to have their own rect or rectangle okay so we're gonna say public uh, rect, view rect. All right, so these are basically things that are shared um, uh, between all these particular objects. So anything that's a view will have some sort of title. Anything that's a view is going to have some sort of rectangle to, to define where it's displayed in the actual entire editor window itself. Okay. Um, and then we're also going to have a uh, protected variable here. So we're going to say protected GUI skin. So the GUI skin is basically what is going to allow us to reskin and just skin in general uh, our particular uh, user interface with our own custom artwork that we create in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm just going to stub this in. We're not going to get it up and running just yet. Uh, we'll save that for a later lesson. All right. So since we're actually creating our own uh, classes here, we're going to have to create our own constructor for this. So if you're not familiar with uh, constructors. Basically, it's a method that is called right when the object is actually created. And you can find out more information on this um, in any sort of introduction to object-oriented programming or C-sharp or any sort of programming language, really. Um, so basically, I would recommend um, checking out some sort of intro to C-sharp um, tutorials, uh, which we are working on at GameTutor.com. So uh, you could wait for that, or you could look it up uh, online. There's definitely lots of resources around that. All right. so. To, to declare a constructor, we're just going to say public and then give the, the type, so view base. And that's really all we need to do. And so what I want to do when I first initialize this object or I first create this object, I want to send it some sort of title. All right. So we're basically just going to initialize that title. All right. So we're going to say view title is actually equal to title. All right, so let me explain that one more time. So basically, right when this view base class gets created, when we say new GT view base, this method is going to be called. All right, we're going to pass in a single argument, which is a string called title. So let's say I am going to create a new instance of the work view. All right, so I'd say new GT view base, pass in a string called work view, and that automatically initializes the view title to whatever's in title. All right, so it's a great way to construct your objects at creation time. All right, so perfect. So then we're going to come down here into our main methods here, and I am going to create a virtual, a couple of virtual methods here. And virtual methods 
uh, basically allow uh, child classes to override the functionality that is inside of this particular method. All right, that way they, they can either inherit the functionality of this method or they can override it completely with its own custom uh, logic. All right, so we're gonna say public uh, virtual void, all right, because we're not gonna return anything and we're gonna update view. So this is gonna be our main update uh, function uh, for our particular view, whichever view we're working on, all right? So then I'm also going to um, declare a uh, public virtual void process events method, like so. All right, and then finally down in the utility methods, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stub in a protected method called void, I mean, that returns void is not or nothing, and editor skin. So basically, we're gonna use this method to get a specific uh, GUI skin for our view base. All right, all right. So that basically gets everything up and running there, okay? So what we need to do is we need to go in and stub in our um, child classes now. So let's just do one for now. Uh, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna go into the uh, property view. So let's start with that property view. All right, and in this particular script, what we wanna do is we wanna get it set up so that it actually derives from our view base over here. So I'm gonna say, instead of modern behavior, we're gonna actually inherit from view base. All right, so now, this particular class is inheriting all the functionality and the properties or the variables in this view base. So we're extending the functionality. All right. So again, we need to um, say that we're going to be using <coughs> uh, the Unity editor and make sure that we don't compile this at um, when we go to build the application. So we're going to say using Unity editor, like so. There we go. Okay, and we're also going to include another using statement. We're going to be including the generic because we're going to start working with lists and stuff like that and arrays to keep track of all of our nodes that we work through. All right. And we're also going to be using some of the uh, system functionality too, but we'll go over that uh, in just a little bit. So again, because we're creating our own class, we don't need the start and update. Those won't work anyways. All right. So let's actually go and create some variables. So our actual regions here. So I'm going to say end region, region uh, protected <clears throat> variables, end region. I have region utility methods. Oh, and I also need to do my main methods. <clears throat> Like so, and region, there we go. Perfect. And also we need to create our constructor. So let's do that. So let's say region uh, constructor. Because if we create an instance of GT node property view, we also need to tell the view base to initialize itself as well. So we will get that set up first. All right, so now we have that in place. Uh, all we need to do is create the constructor for this. But it's gonna look a little bit different. So we're gonna say GT node property view. And this is going to take in nothing. We're not going to do any sort of arguments for this, okay? But we need to pass in um, a particular string to the base, okay? Because we're in inheriting from GT view base, what we can do is we can actually call that base constructor. So by typing out base and then passing in a string that we want. So we can say uh, property view, like so. The, just helps to actually get um, our views up and running without us actually having to pass in any sort of argument. All right, so I actually don't need to do that. Just do put them over there so it keeps our code nice and clean. All right, so that basically gets the constructors up, up and running. So basically now, what happens when I say new GT node property view, okay, what's gonna happen is it's gonna come into its constructor and it's gonna say, hey, I don't have anything to do. But I'm going to call the base, so on GT view base, I'm going to call its constructor and pass in a string right over here like we just explained uh, previously. So I'm going to pass in property view and assign the view title, which the property view actually inherits. I'm going to assign it property view. So now note this particular class will have the view title of property view. 
So you can see the more that you start to extend your code, the less and less you actually have to write because we're putting a lot of the shared functionality in uh, base classes. All right, so it's a great way to start to organize your code and just make, make it easier to read. Um, it's a lot more efficient that way. All right. All right, so let's actually go into our main methods now. So what we need to do is we need to override the functionality of update view. So we're going to say public override. And then if you hit the space bar just once, it'll show you all the methods you can override from the base class. So I want to override the update view. And the nice thing about that is MonoDevelop takes care of automatically putting in the base.update view call. So what this does is it says the base, the base being this GT view base, it's going to call its update view. And so what's going to happen is this particular function is going to get called too. So if I put any sort of functionality in here, the node property class is going to call that first. So what I can do is I can say debug.log updating base view class, like so. And then inside of my property view, I can call a debug.log updating child view class. All right, perfect. So that basically takes care of that. All right, and that pretty much clears up everything. So the last step that we have to really do in uh, this particular case is actually get the classes uh, created. All right, so when we launch the editor, we want to create our views and get everything all set up, okay? All right, so I don't need this node menus anymore. So what I want to do is right when we initialize the editor, we need to create um, some instances of these particular classes. All right, so to do that, let's store them in some public variables. So we'll say public uh, GT node property view. And we'll call this the property view. So that's the name of the actual uh, variable. And it could be whatever you want as well. Uh, that's just my naming convention there. All right, so basically what happens then is when we first launch the editor, what we want to do is we want to create a new instance of this. That way we have it running, okay? So let's actually do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new method called create views. This way I can keep all of my code that is responsible for creating views in one area. So I'm going to put that down in my utilities. So what I can do, since I don't have this method already created, MonoDevelop is telling me that it's not created, so I can right click on it and say create method. And then move this using the arrow keys up and down. I can move it down to the utility menus, like so. All right. So at this point, uh, what I can do is I can actually start to instantiate new versions of these uh, view. So what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to check to make sure that the uh, curve window is not equal to null, just to make sure. Sometimes you can lose that reference. Uh, and if it's not, then what we can do is we can um, actually create those particular variables or those instances of those views. So I'm going to say curve window dot property view is equal to uh, a new node property view. And because our constructor is going to automatically assign the string, we don't need to put in any arguments and we're, and we're good to go. So we also want to make sure that if we don't have a window, we actually try to go find it. So what we can do is we can put in a, another check here to actually reassign the curve window variable. And to do that, to find a window that's already launched, all right, we can do editor window. You basically say editor window dot get window and we give it the type gt node editor window like so okay and make sure we cast it appropriately we say gt node editor window is the right type there all right so that basically keeps our um to make sure that we create the actual view and also gets an instance of the window if it does not exist already. So what we can do is we can come up to our update function now, and we can just make sure that if we ever lose um, some sort of instance, or we could actually do this in our own GUI as well, since it's running twice. All right, so what we can do before we do anything, like in, for instance, drawing any of our GUI, we can say if um, the property view 
is equal to null, then let's actually go and create a new one then. So we'll say uh, get views or create views. All right, so we made it real easy to uh, quickly call and recreate our views if we do in fact lose them. And it also takes care of populating this curl window and keeping that reference um, live, basically. All right, so I'm also going to comment out all these debug logs. All right, just do that for now. I'll keep them there, though. All right, so at that point, we're all good to go. So then what we can do, we should have a property view at this point, okay? If we make it past this particular check, uh, what we can do is we can update our view. So we can, we can actually say property view dot update view, <clears throat> like so. And what should happen is it's going to jump into the property view first, and it's going to come into this update view, and it's going to call the base update view on our GT view base class. All right, and that's going to say updating the base class or base class. And then once it's done with that, it's going to call updating child class. So we should see two debug logs in our actual editor window when we launch it, if we don't have any errors here. And we don't, so we're all good to go. So I'm going to clear out that. I'm going to say launch editor, and there we go. You can see now we're updating our base class, and we're updating our child view class. All right, so everything's running. But you'll notice that if I click off the editor, they're not updating anymore. All right, and that's just because what we need to do is we actually need to make sure that the, the on GUIs is repainting. All right, so that'll be the last thing we do here. So in this on GUI call, once we get down to the bottom here, all we need to do is call a repaint. And we should just be constantly updating now. There we go. So now it's constantly updating no matter what I do. So that way, we're constantly updating the engine. All right, so let's actually take a look at what happens when we press play to our debug logs. So what happened was, you'll notice that it recreated the classes. So I'm going to jump back out here. And then I'm going to hit play again. So it's recreating our classes for us. So what we need to do is we actually need to set these guys to be serializable so they actually stick. So what I'm going to do is call this uh, serializable. And to do that, we actually need to be using, so we'll say using system. All right. So now what I can do is I can call serializable. Now what this will do is it tells uh, Unity that we actually want to save these to disks for the instance that, or for the session that we are running Unity. So uh, it keeps the variable around instead of um, ditching it or sending it to garbage collection once the editor uh, starts to in play mode, basically. All right, so let's actually take a look now. There we go, and we hit play. And it's really kind of hard to see, but you didn't see any sort of like pause right there, right? So hit play, there's no rebuilding of it. All right, so everything is working beautifully now. All right, it's much more apparent when we start drawing the graphics for these things, which we will do in the next lesson. Thanks so much.